Jesus. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Wabansi Community College's Sports Spotlight. I'm Steve Moga, and the 2019-2020 school year has begun, and a lot of fall sports going on already here at Wabansi. And joining me here, our very first segment for the first show of this year, the new all-time winningest coach in women's soccer history here at Wabansi Community College, Brad Schlemmer. Coach, thanks for stopping in. And as usual, you are way overdressed compared to me, but that's a whole nother story. But uh, congratulations, first of all, your very first win this year was your 87th career coaching victory here at Wabansi, uh, passing Leslie Ferguson uh, when she was the head coach here. You coached with her as her assistant for uh, three years before you took over here as head coach. And you've already passed her. And, uh, you know, it was kind of, uh, we, we obviously knew it was coming. You ended last year tied with her. But, uh, you know, so the drama was kind of really out of it, so to speak. But uh, still kind of a nice feeling, isn't it, to get it out of the way? Oh, yeah. And I was, well, you could say I didn't want to go 0-16. I wanted to get it out of the way <laughs> and, and really focus on the girls this year here. Uh, we, it had been a long off season. I didn't think too much about it, but I knew, hey, let's get it out of the way the first game. And then I let the girls know that, uh, that we had done something special. I think that was just a representation of what we've done here. Uh, not really reflecting on me, it's just uh, more of the program and the girls of the success we've had through here. Yeah, it gives a great indication of the success of the last, obviously, uh, the last stretch between Leslie and now your tenure as head coach. Uh, I should mention that 11 years you've been with the program, 141 and 60 and 16 overall. That's your overall record as far as uh, being on the sidelines for the, the Chiefs. 47, 11 and 4 in conference, currently 92 career victories. Um, you know, when you started out, did you think, hey, would I, would I be around this long, number one? Or number two, did you ever think about the numbers? Like, wow, you know, but the numbers just kind of pile up on their own, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's really the experience. Uh, you stick around long enough, eventually something's going to be broken there. But uh, I just, I didn't think too much about the numbers until really the end of last season. We had a very successful season, 17 wins. And I was hoping to get it in the region championship game. It didn't happen, but that was okay. Uh, I knew that uh, sometime we'd get it this year. And very happy how it happened to, with this group of girls who was able to share that experience with them. You uh, mentioned region, and uh, that's, that's, you know, 10 out of the last 11 years, the Chiefs have been in the title match. Um, you've won it four times over those 11 years. You have six runner-up finishes, four in a row, unfortunately, all to Moraine Valley, and you know, that's a whole other story. Um, you know, when you look at that, you know, obviously it's, it's tough to get past that you've got this one team that you can't quite get past in the region. Uh, is there anything you're trying to do differently uh, this year to try and, you know, finally take that final step? Well, I mean, it's tough enough to get in our spot to the region championship in the first place. So it's just making it there. And, and unfortunately, we don't play seven games, uh, seven game series or, uh, you know, have multiple matches. You've got to win that day. And we've been right there a few times and, and just happy to be back to get in that position to fight for that. And no shame in taking second place. Uh, there are plenty of other teams in the region that would love to be in our spot. But uh, yeah, Moraine's just, uh, it's, it's tough what he's done to get there. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, the last four years, um, uh, we've been kind of in this, the, the losing side of that. And hopefully this year with this group, and I feel very confident with this group of girls that, that things will change. But it's all about the experience. Uh, you know, no shame in, in taking a second, second spot after uh, a very tough region. Well, and, and you know what exactly it takes to take that next step, too. You, as an assistant coach uh, with a region championship team that went to the national tournament, you took your own team to the national tournament after a region championship. Um, as you look around in the region this year, you know, like, you know, we just mentioned Rain Valley, obviously, is kind of that stumbling block. But now Brian and Stratton has uh, kind of emerged as another uh, elite team that you have to deal with. Second year program, and they've brought girls from all over the country. 
uh, great head coach, uh, good program, good school. Uh, but there are other teams as well. It's just we had a stumbling block uh, a few games ago. Uh, had a tough win against uh, Morton out of Cicero. Won three to two. Very proud of the girls. And then had to bounce right back and play the number one team in the region. And it was a little tough on them. They fought to the very end. Very proud of all of our girls. Uh, just had a tough few minutes in the first half and set us back. But like I said, uh, we'll hopefully see them again. Uh, but very proud of our girls. Yeah, I do want to touch more on that, the Morton match and the Brian and Stratton match. Uh, for sure, we want to talk about those matches. But in particular, uh, let's talk about this year's team uh, before we take a little break here. And first and foremost, your two top scorers from last year who we expected to be back are not back. And that's obviously, anytime you take your two big guns out of your lineup, that's going to that's gonna affect you. But that's, that's junior college. Uh, we're happy to get them for one year very happy to get them for two years. And uh, Isabel Serta and Molly Schultz, uh, they were good enough to move on to a four year. Very happy to move them on. In fact, we moved five girls on from, from last year. And I think that that's the success of a program if you can move them on to a four year to the next level. So I'm very mm -hmm. proud of both of them. Um, and they're doing uh, very good things at, at the next level here. You only have four years eligibility. Uh, so I was fine with it and helped them out in any way I could to go ahead and move them on to uh, the next level. Uh, like you say, it's, it's the junior college <laughs> realm where you have to kind of rebuild every year because uh, you're going to have players that move on quite often. But uh, we need to take a break right now, and when we come back, we're going to talk more uh, women's soccer here with Brad Schlemmer and uh, talk also about men's soccer a little bit later on with uh, assistant coach Cabron Rodriguez. So stay with us. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. And back here on Sports Spotlight, quick reminder, you get more information by going online to GoChiefs.com, also the NJCAA.org uh, website, and the Region 4, that's Region Numeral 4, Sports.com. So uh, you can get a lot more information on Chiefs Athletics on those three uh, particular sites online, and uh, you can get a lot of information by just uh, talking to Brad Schlemmer, here our women's soccer coach, who has joined us here. And uh, Coach, um, we've been talking about you know players moving on, and how that changes your roster. Well, let's talk about this year's roster. And I hope uh, I don't put you on the spot here too much because a lot of times as, as a coach, there's, there's players I've coached over the years, I don't even know their first names, you know, because you always call them by one thing or another or you're a nickname. So I hope I don't catch you off guard here. But uh, let's talk about, uh, obviously, any team needs to have some offensive punch to their, to their line. But we talked about the two that you lost uh, that moved on that you expected to be back to be key, key parts of your team this year, sophomores, but uh, you still have some other girls that have come in, like uh, Shelby Key has come in and really taken up uh, kind of that scoring slack for you if she leads you in scoring. So Shelby was actually attending Wabonzi, and uh, she didn't think she had enough time to do classes and play sports, and so we could have had her for two years. Uh, hopefully she'll graduate here and then we'll move her on, but Shelby's been a fantastic addition. Uh, local girl, uh, as with all of our, our team, is, is all local. And so very happy with Shelby um, that she joined the team this year. Um, another forward that you've got is uh, our midfielder, Marissa Van Wy, has at times been a little bit of, uh, had, certainly had an effect on your offensive side of the ball, along with uh, Olivia, Olivia Mutes. Yes, two Indian Creek yeah. uh, girls, two local girls here. And uh, yeah, they've stepped up, a few assists, uh, spreading the wealth, if, as you can see. Uh, we don't really have one dominant score. It's more of a multiple of scores, which I would prefer uh, so this year's been been pretty good as far as spreading the wealth. We talk about experience, and again, 
not only on the offensive side of things, but defensive side. You got De uh, Jenny Nunez kind of anchoring your defense back there. That certainly helps some with a little experience there as well. Yeah, Jenny and Lasuli Ramirez, mm -hmm. uh, both of our captains, uh, they know what it took. Uh, they were there on the field when uh, we were in the region championship game. So the experience does help uh, in helping the other girls because the girls coming in, they have no idea who these teams are. Uh, no idea of the history and they're here to carry it on and so hopefully these freshmen that we have will carry that on and you only have one year to do it really um, you know two years if we're lucky but we got to share the history and get it done quick so we're built to win now uh, we can't take four years to go make this happen yeah and you got to mention the other part of your uh, def any defense you got to have a good keeper and you've got obviously a couple of them uh, Skylar Kalen uh, has come in as a freshman, another Indian Creek player as well, and then uh, uh, Alexis Cornelia come back as well as a sophomore. She's filled in back there. I mean, you, you've got some good keepers. Yeah, and it's tough to make decisions. We're making game decisions. Uh, we got Halima Hosman, mm -hmm. and she's uh, also stepping up. She was coming back from injury. Uh, so three goalkeepers. I can't tell you in my 11 years that we've ever had three goalkeepers. We've normally had two, uh, and so having three and having a tough decision, uh, wow, what a, what a great uh, problem to have there. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy about that. And when you go out recruiting and you, you see freshmen, or, you, or you, I mean, sorry, high school players, and you go out and recruit certain players, you, there's some expectations or you feel like you know exactly what they're going to bring to the table. But then, you know, when they come in as a freshman at collegiate level, the game is a little different sometimes, a little quicker, a little more physical. You're not exactly sure what you're going to get from some freshmen. But uh, Annika Carlson has been a mainstay for you here, coming right in and, and contributing right away. Her and, and Ashley Bailey, mm -hmm. uh, both Oswego girls, very happy with their leadership stepping up. And, and uh, we have a, a pretty rock solid team. A uh, few injuries have set us back. We've had other girls go ahead and step in, in positions to go ahead and just help us out. But we're, uh, we're, we're on a roll right now, and hopefully we carry that into the region tournament. And, of course, your midfielders that always transition things from offense to defense and really kind of change or control the tempo a lot of times. You've got, uh, uh, I should mention, Marlene Sanchez uh, has been back there for you quite a bit. And um, I wanted, uh, there was a couple other ones I wanted to mention. But uh, Marlene is one of the ones that always stands out to me that she's – She's in there and occasionally will score, but gets some assists as well. Very lucky to get uh, Marlene. Uh, I felt that Marlene probably should have moved on to a four-year, uh, and she's uh, right out of West Aurora. Very good with the girls, and we move everything from uh, through her uh, through the field there. So very happy with how Marlene's playing this year. I want to talk to you here. We only got a couple minutes left. I want to talk to you about Morton and Brian and Stratton. The Morton match, obviously, I mentioned Moraine Valley is the one you put on. You, you highlight that on the schedule, but Morton was the other one that you kind of, you know, always got to run through things, especially when you go over to, to Cicero there on the turf. It's a little bit different for you there. Very hostile environment, and Morton's uh, has always been a challenge for us. They play on turf very fast, and our girls come in. I didn't really, I had a lot of confidence in our, our team that day, and, and uh, we got a little bit beat up, had to play, come back and play Brian Stratton the next day. That's just how the schedule worked out. The girls were up to the challenge. Uh, just unfortunate, just a, a little slip there in the first part of Bryant Stratton. They came back mm -hmm. strong in the second half. And uh, we're rolling, we're playing Moraine tonight. Uh, so I'm excited, all dressed up, uh, <laughs> ready to take on uh, uh, the, the, the reigning champs there. Yeah, I want to, the, the Bryant Stratton match in particular, yeah, a couple of tough goals early. You fell behind 4-0 uh, at half, and that, that was a big hill to climb. You scored a couple goals in the second half, but uh, they obviously a uh, uh, pretty good team. And now they kind of emerging as the one seed the way things look right now. And then it's you and Marine Valley are like right there battling for one and or two or two A or two eight B, however you want to say that. But uh, uh, as you see things down the road, um, what do you think between those two teams? Who would you rather play in the end and who do you think you're going to play? Uh, to be honest with the attitude of our girls, we'll play anybody. It doesn't really matter. We're more and more focused on what we do, not what somebody else does. And I think we'd ha like to have an opportunity at, uh, at Brighton Stratton, but if it's Moraine, if it's Morton, if it's Lake County, it doesn't really matter. These girls are, mm -hmm. they want to play and uh, they won't back down from anybody. Well, Coach, good luck against Moraine Valley. Good luck the rest of the way. We will check back with obviously later here in the season. Hopefully we can be talking about a conference championship and a regional title and going on to the Nationals. That'd be, that'd be a lot of fun again to do that. But uh, time will tell. We're going to take a break here on Sports Spotlight. Uh, stay with us. We're going to talk about men's soccer after these messages. <laughs> yeah! Sam, Elmo! Oh, hey, Julia. Are you ready to play band with us? I'm going to play my clarinet. And Elmo's going to play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. <laughs> Julia knows. Mm-hmm. 
With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> Play band. <sighs> Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. You got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Welcome back here to Sports Spotlight. As you can see on that widescreen, we have our big trophy here in the middle here, the All Sports, the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference All Sports Trophy that uh, Wabansi won again. I got to say that again last year, and it's a brand new trophy. They changed it from what it used to be. Now it's kind of like the Stanley Cup, which is kind of cool. But uh, hopefully we can win that again and just keep engraving our name on that. And uh, one of the guys who will be a part of that, hopefully, is Gabron Rodriguez, our assistant men's soccer coach who when the men's soccer team wins the conference for the fourth consecutive year, no pressure, I'm just putting that on you right now, <laughs> uh, you know, that'll go towards potentially winning this thing again. Yeah. But uh, you guys are, have shared, at least shared the conference title for the last three years in a row, and yeah. you're in a pretty good spot right now yeah. to get maybe a fourth consecutive title, yes. tied for first place here, 4-1 and one yeah. with uh, Prairie State, who beat you guys 1-0 oh, no. at their place, yes. and Morton, who you beat, in the overtime, four to three, all three are right now tied, and it's uh, kind of what we've seen in the past here with the with the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference. Everybody takes turns beating each other, kind of yes. beating up on each other, because it's pretty well uh, balanced throughout the conference. Yes, uh, um, I was talking to the coach in Marshalltown when we went to go play Marshalltown, and he just says he doesn't uh, he he doesn't uh, comprehend how our guys at the end of the season are not tired. <laughs> uh, and uh, I told him, well, yes, they are tired. The only thing is that we play more games than you guys, and you guys have a little bit more rest because we have more people in our region, in our conference. So we have to play the games. It's not like with mm -hmm. you guys only have about, what, 12, 13 teams, and that's about it. So, uh, yeah, uh, we, he, he made this remark that, you know, our re region and conference is the tough one of the toughest in the nation. And to coming coming from Marshalltown, a ranked team in the nation, that that says a lot. So. Now you guys played them tough. You lost two nil in that one, yeah. but you played them tough and, and yeah. had a very good showing regardless yeah. of the final. And I they recognize that Marshalltown is a perennial power. Yeah. Every year they're they're ranked in the top ten. It seems yes. like, and this year is no no different. Yes. And uh, it's good to play teams like that. And then you also, like you said, the conference schedule is so balanced. Everybody seems to be so even. It's quite a struggle, but so far. You guys have done very well. Seven and three overall in yes. the conference. Seven and two in the region. That Marshall one doesn't isn't in the region, yes. obviously. Yeah. But uh, seven and two in the region. So you're pretty high up mm -hmm. in the region seedings here so far as well. Yeah, uh, we'd like to be better, uh, you know. But you know, in this region, anybody can win. Uh, at least for the most, the, the the first top ten teams, we're about even. Uh, and any team can show up, and any team can win or lose. And that's good competition, that's healthy. That means that our conference and region have grown throughout the years and it used to be an unbalanced where the Oaktons, the Mortons, and yeah, the, yeah. and uh, that was about it. That was about it right there. Oakton had five titles in yep. a row and didn't lose a conference game for five years. Yes. Uh, 35 and all or whatever. So, yes. and then you guys kind of ran off a little string there as well where yeah. you uh, have dominated. You're right. It's always been kind of the haves and the have-nots, but it seems to be more balanced. And oh, now, now, just, now you don't know. Uh, yeah. Carl Sandberg used to not win any games, and now they're competing up in the top eight. So that's healthy, and that's what we want because we we got to prepare for that. You know, if we go and take that regional title and that conference title, we got to prepare for the Marshall Towns, mm -hmm. the Moreaus, and those teams that we we saw on nationals about two years ago. So, you know, that's good that we're growing. I, I, I like the competition in our, in our conference and region. It's, yeah, it's it certainly is. Well. It, and it certainly helped to get your guys better. And yes. uh, we want to talk about this year's team. And 
you know, what do you think right off the top of your head? What is the strength of this group? Because last few groups, uh, I mean, you've had some very good teams uh, since 2013 yeah. and uh, put some really good numbers up. But I watched each team and I was like, wow, this team really works well together or this team mm -hmm. really is fast or this team is, was really tough defensively mm -hmm. or this team had just some powerhouse offensive. Mm -hmm. you, you, you had six different guys that could score at any yeah. moment type of thing. What's this team? What do the, you put a finger on? Is the, the, this, this year, way, we have a more of a hormonal balance where it's a little bit of everything. But this year, um, past, past previous years, we, we've had strong defenses, but we have a really solid defense, back four. And we have uh, guys that can come off the bench that are defenders as well that could start, that give those other guys breaks. Uh, you know, it showed versus Marshalltown. Other, guy, other teams in our region have been losing more than 3-4-0, 5-0, 6-0, mm -hmm. where we, we played with them. Um, and obviously, they put two good balls in the net, but I mean, we have a really strong defense. And in the history of uh, Wabanzi, I, I want to say this is by far one, if not the strongest, or one of the strongest defenses of Wubanti soccer, men's soccer history. So uh, that's, but yeah, other than that, our midfield, our forwards are balanced. Uh, everybody's scoring from the midfield and up, even some of the defenders. Um, but yeah, we, our midfield is pretty, uh, pretty solid. We, we went with a different style of play this year. I mean, we, uh, okay, I mean, yeah. the tiki taka still, but you know, where we we put a three, uh, we put three guys up top now, and we vary it from two to three guys mm -hmm. because we have a lot of guys that could attack a lot of midfielders and forwards like Manuel, with Manuel Magaña, you got uh, Labrado, Olivares, you got um, uh, at, uh, Alejandro Arevalo from East Aurora. Quite doing quite well in the in the, in the national rankings. Mm -hmm. He has he's up there in points and up there in goals and assists. So, you know, but overall, you know, everything's great. In the, but yeah, I want to say our strength, our super strength is our our, def, our defense. You know, what Adrian Bravo second year, and then mm -hmm. the the oncoming uh, player. His name is AJ Bohra uh, Phenomenal, phenomenal, complete player. So overall, yeah, we're, we're really balanced, so. Well, there's a few other guys I want to talk about, but we got to take a break okay. here. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about that and talk a little bit about, uh, more about men's soccer. So stay with us here on Sports Spotlight. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Back here on Sports Spotlight, and uh, in the last 13 months here in the coaching community around the area, we've lost five legendary coaches who have passed on, and I wanted to take a moment here to mention each one of them real quickly. And uh, Denny Short, who was a longtime assistant baseball coach, a lot of the high schools around the area, who worked here at Wabansi's Fall Baseball League for 25 years, passed away a little more than a year ago. Wabansi lost two of the pillars of Chiefs Athletics, Ray Lump, who was the first men's basketball coach here uh, many, many years ago passed on, and uh, five weeks later, Bill Prince, who was the first baseball coach and athletic director here at Wabansi. Both those guys, Hall of Famers here at Wabansi, both of them passed on as well. I want to mention Don Jungle Sr., who was a, a baseball coach in the Aurora Boys Baseball League for 50 years. Was several of his ball players played here for the Chiefs in years beyond that, and most recently, Ken Pickerel, who was Mr. Oswego for 60 years, the last 60 years, been a pillar in that community, and many of his former players played here at Wabansi as well over the years and uh, our condolences to all those families and uh, just a huge uh, thank you to those coaches. You never thank you is almost not enough for what those men did for a lot of the youth and uh, 
the coaching that they did in our community the last five, six decades. So wanted to mention that. And uh, uh, on a more happy note here, we've got our man here, Gabron Rodriguez, talking men's soccer. And coach, when we took went to the break, we were talking about some of your players and what a good mix of guys you got offensively and defensively. There are some other guys we didn't mention as well. Mm -hmm. And should mention, uh, uh, um, first of all, your, your keeper, Diego Daniel, yes. who's done a fantastic job for you back there. Yes, uh, he's, he's, he's done really great. Uh, we're uh, lucky to keep him healthy because he did have, a, in the beginning of the season, he did have a back issue. So, yeah, he's been fundamental to, for us, a part of the defense. Uh, mm -hmm. Great leader. Uh, he's 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 uh, been stepping up and getting the guys, you know, getting getting them ready for each game. You know, uh, us coaches we can do so much, but you know the two captains and, and Daniel have been fundamental, getting these guys motivated and positively in the right route. Uh, I was gonna say another guy who gives energy to your team and some motivation as well, Dante Sosa. He's oh like, yeah, he's like your spark plug. Your oh team yeah, yeah, yeah. Ways. He's yeah, he's a lightning bolt. <laughs> he literally <laughs> wears a lightning bolt on his <laughs> on his neck. Yeah, he, he does bring a punch to our uh, offense. Very dynamic, very dynamic. We're very straightforward, uh, fearless attacker, and uh, we, we like what he brings to the team. And he bring, you know, he's been really key in some of uh, our key goals to winning some of these matches. So uh, we're fortunate to, you know, have him one more year. And uh, he's yeah, he's very he's very much uh, one of the foundations of our attack. And not only that, we talk about and, chemistry of teams and yeah. and. Things, all the intangibles that make up great teams. Yeah. He, he's the guy who keeps everybody loose as well, it seems like. He's, yes. the, he's the energy guy, and he's also the guy that just, you, every team, every good team has that type of guy, or whether he's in the, on the field all the time yeah. or not, or yeah. he's in the clubhouse, he keeps things light, or he keeps things even keel, and he keeps everybody locked in. Yeah, yeah, he keeps everybody locked in, and also he, he, he has a little sense of humor, so he keeps the guys loose, you know, like, you know, you know, you know it's business, right, and, you know, academics, and, and athletics is, you know, very serious, but you gotta have some fun. You gotta have some fun, and that, he brings that to the team as well. So, as well as uh, Andy, Andy. Uh, and that was I was gonna get to Andy was the next one I was gonna mention. <laughs> yeah, both of those guys are uh, a handful when it comes on the field. Not many guys could hang could, could hang with their speed, and their agility, and uh, their ball skills. So, yeah, Andy is also part of that too. And we're fortunate to have, you know, not just them two, but everybody that, that contributes, which is basically the entire team, to be all on one, you know, one page this year. That's it's pretty harmonic. It's, it's tough to defend a team that's got so many different weapons, different guys that can score or contribute. And uh, you guys certainly seem to have that this year. Now, you've got some big matches coming up. Yeah. Should mention, uh, and there, there's Kennedy King in there, and a South Suburban match will be a big one coming up as oh, well as far as for seeding. That'll be huge for you guys. Yeah. Uh, what do you know about the Bulldogs? Right, uh, right now, uh, we, we did go uh, scout. Uh, we were, um, you know, checking different teams out, you know, seeing their stats and stuff like that. Uh, from what we saw is that the Bulldogs have a great midfield, great offense is exactly like us, but like every other team, you know, you got to find their weaknesses. And, you know, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a tough game, and it's always been a tough game with them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's it's a battle. It's always been a battle of them beating us, us beating them. You know, so it's going to be a tough match. I, I think it's a match that, you know, may the best team win. But, you know, of course, I'm, we're Chiefs. We, 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 we got to bring that victory home. So, Yeah, I mentioned an, another key battle will be October 1st uh, you, when you play Moraine Valley. Oh. That will be obviously a, a big yes. one. And October 10th, when you play Oakton, those yes. two conference games will determine probably yes. who's going to be champs this year. Yes, and uh, that's going to be very key. But, you know, we're going to come out and take a game at a time and, uh, you know, get this, try, to, try to get the guys focused till then. And, uh, you know, it, it's ultimately up to, uh, you know, the team and us. But, you know, it's a team effort, so hopefully we can bring this uh, conference title back so we can have another Skyway conference <laughs> title. Uh -huh. I certainly like the way you're thinking, Coach. Yeah. Well, we are out of time right now, but we look forward to meeting up with you again here in a few weeks and talking about some of these matches and possibly adding to that trophy yeah. one more time. But uh, we need to go now. We are all out of time here on Sports Spot on behalf of... Uh, our crew, Jim McGarra, Chris Foster, and uh, the always AWOL Jamie Lara. I'm Steve Moga. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.